All right, so we can get started. Let's do it. I'd like to welcome everyone to the fourth episode of Money Trees. I am your host, Khufu, K-H-U-F-U. I am joined by the New York nature boy himself, Ja Lefty. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, good? yo. <laughs> <laughs> what up, G? How you living? What's good? I'm living living divinely, my brother. Feeling ooh, good. Ooh, I love it's to nice, hear that. It's a nice a nice day you know i mean it's cloudy but oh it's like a nice day i'm looking out the window <laughs> it's, it's foggy well, not foggy but yeah it's great it's great it was, it was a it was a personal maintenance day so you know it's it's that's how it became nice for me like just had to go grab some stuff like oh no some shaving stuff t- t- tell us that yeah. what, what, what's all the personal maintenance what's that look like it's a spa day for you a mi- yeah, at home like, spa I'm, day pretty much like i just i i went out and I had to cop some some African soap, some black soap, uh, some shea butter soap, and some face kind of like face washes and things like that, just to kind of like freshen up. I, I don't know. I like to feel I like to feel clean and natural, so it's like those are the kind of go tos. Hell yeah! Refresh and the stock ahead of the year. Yeah. And where I do you, some, Where do you go? Yeah. Um. Honestly, I go to the <laughs> to the brand stores, but. Like they'll they'll have they'll have the good stuff, yeah. but it'll be a little bit more processed from time to time. But um, alternatively, like you could find like shea butters and shea moisters from like any African store, or even like some street vendors will have it, and you'll be able to cop it. And it's really good stuff. And Bro, the next time you pull up to record, you need to run to Medina. It's Medina. like real, yeah, yeah. It's right on Atlantic. It's a, um, it's a black owned. Like they got all the essential oils. Mm-hmm. They they got the African black soap, the shea oh, soap, but then they got the lotion too. And it's it's fire, bro. And it's oh, okay. dead ass. Like I think it's like eight dollars for six, like a six pack or whatever. And yeah. it's always on point, all natural. Um, and they make it. I'm, I'm well. Let me not say that. I believe their factory or their warehouse is in Brooklyn. Uh, at least that's the address on here. So you know we supporting local black owned, black owned businesses out Hell here. Yeah, Medina, that sounds fire. I'm happy. Yeah, to now we'll, yeah. Next time you pull up, we, we'll go because I need to refresh ahead of the year anyway. <laughs> I feel you. Yo, so it's funny. I realized I was listening back on like the first three episodes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, bro, I really don't like. <laughs> I don't be explaining shit. <laughs> so <laughs> let me let me give a little background. Uh, ja Lefty is. I, I I don't know how else to describe it outside of like my fucking guy. Uh, Thanks. You know, we both from Brooklyn, been working together in one way or another for the past damn going on like four years now. Yo, for real, that's that. Yo, that's crazy, Sheesh. right? She. Wow. <laughs> yo, crazy crazy story, right? So, Ja is one third of new group that we're working with, Wild East Radio. And, well, Wild East. Right. And we actually all were in the same place at a performance. What was that? Like, five, it was five years ago for yep. the... Where, where was that at? Well, wait, wasn't Samir there too or much of it? Yes, he was at uh, Teens Take the Met, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. At Teens Take the Met. Crazy ass event. Yep. And there's a video of these kids like going wild and like performing it and i remember we saw that and we're like yo like their energy is nuts and then (laughs) a year later come to find out that that was actually lefty and i was just like wait what the hell wait wait wait. you're talking about the time you dropped (laughs) okay dexter right yo when we were uh, at the met so like we were basically supposed to perform that night and what ended up happening was it was so packed that they uh they shut it down and we were so we were like we were bummed out, but luckily Samir came through, had a speaker, and we ended up like getting them to start a chant. And we were just like, "Yo, like drop the song, put it on, like perform this shit right here in front of everybody." And that was like basically what we did. And like, like it was, it felt like a legendary moment, like one of those moments, like damn, okay, yeah, like we get it, we get it. In. <laughs> what? What? Ra was there too, wasn't he? But like, I think he was there with um with KK. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so um, everybody was basically there, which is so like it's so surreal to think about it that way. Like, cause yo, man, <laughs> like is <laughs> a very chance moment, really, like really very chance moment, and <laughs> it's just it's so. I'm really grateful that that happened, and that you know that it's it's come to this now. What it's evolved into is like it's incredible. 
it's insane. I don't want to um <laughs> I don't want to get off topic too mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm. But you ever think about that you may have already walked past your wife? Mm. Ah, uh, things like, like that. Things like that. Dude, me y'all in the same restaurant together or something, <laughs> and you're just like, damn, damn, I didn't even know that we was there together. Right. Like, nah, that shit be um, killing me. Like when you you find out your wife, like somebody you you didn't know you were about to meet, was already somewhere else, way ahead of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? Uh, so getting back to you, mm-hmm. crazy impromptu performances, and yeah. it was wild because we saw that, and our thought was just like, "Yo, that shit is special," yeah. and had no idea who it was or why it was happening, but just knew that there was an energy about it. Right? I kid y'all not. I have been to at least three shows with Ja where the artist has stopped the show because of the way that he <laughs> is giving them energy in the crowd it, it's it's the most surreal things i've never ever seen that just at all and for it to have happened three times with him Boy. it's nuts that was um we did the the rap con thing at rough trade mm-hmm. oh yeah we yeah, did yeah. the the private levi show that was the one where joey badass stopped the Yo, show and was like i'll perform Jerry. for you uh yeah shout out to joey badass and, for real <laughs> Yo, you know what's cr- I, who has that picture? I believe, do you have that stuff? I think you might have it. The the hard copy of the picture. Nah, there's a um. Well, yeah, the hard copy, but just the digital. I think I think I do have it. It's definitely on my hard drive. Copy. You gotta unearth. Yeah, because that that was another one of those just like moments where. So we were doing a, well, we were at a private Levi's event where they were like doing jeans or doing jeans as an extent. So they were like in grip. <laughs> <laughs> stitching people's names on jeans and, you know these corporate events sometimes it's just the crowds they get these big name artists to come out it was joey badass de la a right. few other people and the the crowd just don't be into it into it the way that right, they should right and ja was into it because joey badass is like one of the people we looked up to coming yeah, out for real <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> I just remember him stopping the show and being like, no way that this just happened again. Right. And then, <laughs> what, like a couple, I want to say a few weeks later, was the Genius Barbecue, and then Princess Nokia did the same thing. Right, right, right. Yo. <laughs> she was she was at the Levi's thing, too, actually. Wait, for uh, what? Yo. I didn't even, damn. Yeah, no, nah, I, was, I, was, I was on some, some crazy timing, too. <laughs> Said, Y'all was like, no, 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 trust me, aura. I saw it. <laughs> I just had to run with it from that day. I was like, where Princess Nokia said I, she liked my aura. I'm, I'm the dead, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man, certified, bro. Right. I mean, that that really is a testament to your energy, though, fam. I swear. It's, <laughs> it was crazy. So you're coming off Rolling Loud. And the way that we were able to set this up is – in part because of how you know quality the music it is that y'all make, right, right, right. but it's because of the performance energy. Uh, you did your first show ever as a group at Seneca's Village, mm-hmm. and h- how was that? What was that experience? Like? That was it. Was also really like interesting and surreal because so many people kind of like came out more than I was really expecting for that show. Where I was like, oh, like it might be a little like you know small in the wall kind of like spot, but it ended up being like real real turnout and so like i was like oh yeah like this is perfect because i know we're gonna go hard and we've been just kind of working towards this thing and like you know it's it's been kind of like okay when when how are people gonna react when they hear this like what's gonna be the the feeling and and like so being able to like see in real time like oh okay people are turning up to this people are getting like you know are vibing and enjoying it and, and and following us through it with it it was like it was really great to see and you know there was there was always that little bit of like nervousness and everything you're like ah you got the jitters but it was like it was also very um like inviting it felt like like you know you were a part of like this community of artists as well all of that you you, i'll shut it down uh (laughs) it was crazy because they asked for an encore yeah (laughs) and it just just, no one was ready for it oh yeah Uh, I will say also that was probably the first event I've been to as an adult where I felt old. I was looking around and I'm like, oh, okay, Gen Z. Right. I see what's happening here. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. We was Gen z out for real. <laughs> out. But so I sent, I sent DJ Five Venoms and his team that video performance. And it was just, you know, talking to them about the records and y'all. And they saw that video and were like, nah, we, we get it. We, <laughs> we see it. And man, like that is that that's a rarity, G. I'll I'll tell you. Sure. And it's so consistent. It's so yeah, just c- consistent is the word where whether you're at the studio, rehearsals, just walking out on the street. <laughs> um that was fun. Like when we, we went to LA and that was Jaw's first time in LA. <laughs> and um I don't you know, I mean we could tell the story. You, you want to tell the <laughs> yeah, story? Yeah, which one? Which one? <laughs> T- target target oh target. yeah yeah, yeah. target <laughs> so one one thing i'll say this i love about job ja is he is so respectful and there are a lot of dudes that cannot have conversations with women that they don't know and not you know come across abrasive or rude or any of that and probably more than anyone i know you have like the softest touch, we'll say, hey. <laughs> which is insane because you put up so many. Damn no, shots. for real. <laughs> Got to keep it graceful. So if you fall, you don't hurt yourself too much. You'd be like, "All right, cool." <laughs> I could, I could. Oh, uh, <laughs> wait. So, yeah, so target shorty. Yeah. Quick story. You know, yeah, you got to go. With like, it, I went in there. I think I was looking for something, uh, like some lip balm or something for the travels and. I end up going to the cash register and I see this like really cute girl and I'm like, whoa, like, all right, like, you know, she's at work, she's checking out these items and all these things, like, man, like, I, I don't know, I probably shouldn't shoot my shot. There was a lot going on. It was like babies crying and things. So I was like, you know, I kept it real simple and sweet. Like he was like, oh, like a hair, you know, and I left the store and thinking like, okay, that's probably the last I'll probably see her. We're in Cali, like it's like it's it's a one off kind of thing. Um, but I went outside, which is into like this open space with, uh, to meet up with Ra and Cody and what ends up happening, she, she leaves her post and she's like walking down the stairs, like getting some food at the cafe. And I'm like, nah, there's no way that this is happening. So I like, I take it as a sign. I just go up to her and I'm like, yo, like I wanted to be respectful because you, you was at your job and I know you're about to get food now, but I just wanted to say, you know, I really think you're cute. And you know, if you can show me around the city or whatever, like that would be valid. And she was with it, so it was just like I, I was. I was surprised, but I feel like she was surprised that I went and did that anyway, knowing like, oh, oh shit. Uh, but knowing that <laughs> popping bottles, yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> yo, <laughs> I'm like, yo, no way. <laughs> but um, yeah, nah, it was it was a real like, real spontaneous moment because I wasn't sure if I was gonna do it for real, but like it, it turned out to be pretty good and we ended up like going out later and getting like ice cream some other stuff and it was, she was, she's a really cool person there's a second part to this story that we'll we'll save <laughs> 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 but i i think that that's just like again testament to the energy no matter where you go it's consistently like that and y'all went out on stage later that night and smoked it, right? Bro. Like that was crazy. Yeah. So was when I think I went on it like ten ten, rolling loud, mm-hmm. S- Southern California, on Saturday. Yep, like that is was- prime time, <laughs> second show ever, <laughs> and you are in the shits and shut it the fuck down, For bro. Real, so. I love it, man. I'm I'm so excited that I get to watch y'all grow. And be a part of this journey, Bless like fam. like for real, for real, man. Bless, man. Yo, <laughs> it's crazy. It's <laughs> keep going up is the real shit. So it's like that's what I'm super excited for because, like, I just love to like make music and all this shit. So it's like the whole everything that surrounds it, the performances, like talking with you, like all of this is like fire to me. Like, I, I this is it, bro. Because I I've, I've seen it and like was like. To like zoned into that feeling or like that uh, that want from it, but I just like haven't haven't done the performance or for the festival was, was like I don't know if I oh you're getting rugged I got, like, you got rugged um, yeah you cut out you cut out okay let me see can you hear me yeah I can hear you can you hear me okay 
All right, yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, let me, <laughs> let me try to set that shit on Do Not Disturb real quick. Yeah, throw on that D yeah. real quick. All right. But performing that show kind of just proved to me, like, anything is possible. It was another one of those legendary moments where, yo, this is it. This is what we work hard for. This is This is what we've been putting in work for all this time that it comes into fruition and that as long as you are consistent, as long as you are like, you know, consistently elevating, like, you know, pushing yourself, like, you know, I've had those moments where I even felt like, hmm, maybe I'm I'm settling and you've come and you've pushed me in a way that was like, yo, you know, get it, like, get it done. And I just was like, all right, fuck it. Like, those to the grindstone got to work harder to the, for this shit. And seeing results from that is always like amazing for me. Cause like I'm, I, I just like I don't even believe it. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? We're here, <laughs> fam. You you deserve this shit and more. I remember when we were at, we're in Nora's studio, and something happened where you were struggling to get a verse out or whatever. And the exact moment that happened, it rolling loud. I told you was going mm-hmm. to happen. I was like, my G, get on the mic in a couple of months maybe a year and change you will be performing on a massive stage right. and these same records that you're laying down right here are going to be there and it's it's simple it was written already i i saw it then that I, and that's the exact thing I said <laughs> to you right before you went out on stage like yo bro you got this shit like this was it was written. That's the that's the easiest way for me to put it. And Absolutely. there is so much, so much more of the story to unfold. And yeah, it's it's beautiful, man. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, the, the fact that this is just the the prologue is crazy to me. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like this, this y'all, we pilot. set we setting y'all up. This is literally the pilot. We just taking off. Yeah. On that note, right? I I really I wanted to start this series. Well, I've started this series with the idea behind examining like how my friends and the people that I know, how they operate in the current you know, landscape of whatever their career is, but also how that ties into Web3. Because the internet is such a huge part of our lives currently from social media to freaking ordering food to yeah. Airbnb. So it's just like we're – experiencing um experiencing a <laughs> revolution we can call it and it's oh, dope but it's super super complex from the outside looking in but i think yeah. that the concepts are simple the complex part is that the jargon and somebody actually tweeted this at me the jargon is where people get lost right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I talked to you a good bit about Web3 and more what's happening, but not really the technicals of it as much as I should. Like, I want to actually literally later this week, we're going to get you set up with your ENS name, do your MetaMask and kind of do the uh, the basic steps for that. Hey, yeah, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I wanted to ask you just from your own perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you think about Web3 or even, you know, do you even have an idea what Web3 is? To be honest, like, it's still very, like, uh, abstract for me because uh, I, I I just, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more on the side of, like, not really knowing what it is and, like, not really, like, like following so much. But I, I've got, like, snits, like, little little tidbits of ideas of it. And, like, you know, I can, I can understand how it's going to grow and kind of just be the main mode of operation for the future, just kind of, like, seeing everything take that technological step and even like involving myself with more uh technological just like prowess um it just kind of like it shows just how powerful this this is going to be and and how infused into everyday life is going to really like turn into and so i and just how important it is to get in now where you're we're kind of like super fresh and and it's still a very moldable thing 100 percent. we we talk about your why a lot so I think that that's the most important thing where it's like why you need to own something digitally and why an NFT makes sense for what you're building. Because mm-hmm. I look at Wild East and I think, man, we have a 17 and 18 and a 21 year old who are at the beginning of their career. Like you said, this is just the prologue. 
Mm-hmm. And people can start following your journey and tracking that journey right now. Right. And that is a really, really, really wild concept. Yeah. You know, the yeah. ownership, the funds, all of that to me, I think, is very dope. And I'm not trying to minimize that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I, I tell the story about how I have an email from Logic from back my first year when I was a manager, mm-hmm. 16. This is summer of 2011. And I reached out Damn. to get a to get a feature from him uh, for the artist that I was managing. And he responded. And it was like, I think... Four hundred dollars for a feature. Damn, yeah, <laughs> no, nah, that's valid. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, yo, like this is this is a crazy little piece of history for me because this person ended up becoming who he became. Exactly. But I, I I knew that I was rocking with the music then, but there was no way for me to kind of stamp that. And right. you know, people can pull up old tweets, and then they can pull up like, you know, oh, I was up on this first, oh, I was listening to this first, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. But now there's a way to really kind of show that. You know, there's yeah. a way to flex it. There's a way to prove it. There's a way mm-hmm. to be rewarded for it. And so it touches on all these kind of cool cultural points. Because that is a dope thing. Discovering an artist. I think about when Travis uh, shared that video of him performing. And mm-hmm. there were like 13 fans in that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. like, yo, that's how, that's how shit starts off. Exactly. But, Imagine if you were one of those 13 fans and then you had an NFT that commemorated that moment. You were literally one of 13 people that were at that show or you got a POAP token. Wow. Uh, and it's like, yo, 15 years from now, you're like, bro, this video, this is me. Right. <laughs> like, this is right. literally here. And, you know, that's a collectible. That's something that we, I think we we kind of lose sight of because we, you, ah, excuse me. We haven't been in an age where owning music is very common. You know, like, I don't know. When's the last time you bought a CD? Shit. <laughs> Probably like <laughs> 2010. <laughs> right? Like and so before that. <laughs> you don't really have anything tangible that celebrates what, you know, that experience you may have had with that artist. Like, I still mm-hmm. think back how the very first album I ever had was Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. And the Marshall Mathers LP. I got them both for mm. my birthday. And wild albums to give yeah. a, a child. But <laughs> I he was, I he was getting the full rundown. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we all got to get into that. Yeah. But um, is is crazy to me because I see that and I think like, man, I, I don't even know where those CDs are at. But it would be really cool to have uh you know a collectible from 03 that i've had since i was a kid right. and that's that's you just can give the, that to other people too right I, yeah you, like, you could give it you could keep it you know that's like oh, it's like yeah. owning something it's something that you have and you can decide how you want to use it and how you want people to experience it right and to me that's like you know i've, I've talked to you about this just with y'all and the radio show and a bunch of other things that are kind of milling about right now right in the but that's exciting yo like that yeah. really really gets me thinking like damn the people that the, like imagine the people that were at the seneca's village show had mm-hmm. that uh that nft they didn't know about rolling loud you know what i mean right. like we we didn't let people know if that's what was happening on the follow-up right 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 and i was like yo damn now we were there for the first ever wild east performance exactly it, it that's a changes, moment it changes like regular shit or like seemingly regular shit into like even more meaningful to these people or to like in the in the grand scheme of things it's yeah i <laughs> i couldn't agree more that's yeah. the easiest way to say it i think that it's pretty um it's well actually just on that note you have another performance coming mm-hmm. up what is the date i i'm not sure of the exact date because i know um it's it's going to be in february i believe but i'm not sure the exact date when we're locked in but um yeah it's going to be our first like soul like so like fully for our uh group show yeah first solo and, show uh, you can say solo yeah, i solo mean it's show. a group but yeah. it's solo yeah solo group show <laughs> but, uh, what wait oh i'm i'm tripping of course covid shut down the one for new year's yeah, right yeah so new yeah year's, it shut down um so we're we're hoping things will slow down and by february we can get uh something going 
And that would be really dope, just like being able to present way more music than than we we were able to in that first uh, kind of performance and being on that set. Nah, that, that's exciting. So we're gonna have to figure out some type of token reward or like po app to do for people when they pull up to that one. That's oh, yeah. enough time for it's sure some, to get that some together. Scannable something, yeah. <laughs> right, and then think about like you know they uh, what are they calling it now? Token gated experiences, but the mm-hmm. idea is like. Yo, if you go to our first three shows, we'll we'll host a private show for fifty people at a crazy venue with you know whatever whatever going you know whatever the bells and whistles are. Mm-hmm. And because you went to the first three shows, and we can verify it, mm-hmm. you can come to this show f- for free. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like that's, that, it doesn't. That's dope, right? It's, it's ideas like that that we're gonna start putting together. Um, you know, so is right now we had samir up here but Mm -hmm. i like it it was stock who i met yesterday and uh, he's from pretoria yeah has a question ja what's up uh hey guys hey um not really a question but i wanted to be like when when you were speaking about um like the albums the, the get rich or die trying like i still have those albums that um, oh yeah yeah the jay-z's uh blueprint i still have like the hard copy of that i still have uh our uh, detour of uh devil's world i still have like all of those nah fine nah the d12s were those, 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 hey, that album. Yeah. <laughs> jaru yeah. was still like um popping I just forgot that Yeah, like oh, stock, still, your connection is rugged to you right now. <laughs> I'm chilling like in a box, like all of those albums. So when you mentioned that, I was like, oh shit, that is so true. Like with the NFT, yeah, I was like, like oh, man, it's like you took me back to that stage, man. Still love. And and you're right, like it becomes a collectible. Like it can actually, like at some point, is it's going to be history, right? Right. Yep. It really is, and man. That's, and that's, that's that's dope. No, yeah, Jai, you go, my fault. No, like, what are you saying just about it becoming history? Like, that's something that I definitely find value in. Like, I know, like, just even, like, with outside of music, like, like say, comic books or something like that, you're collecting those, like, you get a big stock of it, and it just becomes this, it kind of becomes its own standalone thing of having all of these different uh, collectible items and, and stuff from, from different places, for artists, based, rather. I mean, yeah, places are, it, I think that, not to get all crazy philosophical, you know, life is about a collection of experiences. And you string together these experiences. And sometimes, you know, for the sake of nostalgia, you want to look back. And we've gotten to an age where it's very hard to look back at some of the nostalgic things that we have because they're not really tangible. Like, you know, the Spotify rap is cool and kind of seeing your old playlist and everything like that. But it's not necessarily indicative of the artist's taste where it's like that's just a song and it's just an artwork there's not really layers to that experience Mm -hmm. where like stock was saying if he still has not if since he still has those cds he can literally go in and look at the original liner notes he has something that you know 50 or m or job put together uh, you know, you know, with their team that was meant for a different type of fan experience. Right. And I think that that's one of the, if not the dopest things that NFTs is bringing to the entertainment and art world is that type of um, new layer of digital collectible. Uh, Hell yeah. I just wanted yeah, to I say, definitely agree. Sorry, sorry. I just wanted to say, like, I remember... Earlier this morning, you were talking about um, Shoma Josie, and um, like even with her, I've got pictures of, of uh, I've got like a history with her from high school. Like I got pictures with her chilling in high school, you know. So I'm thinking of like finding permission and actually like see if we can put those on thing. Like since like now she's world stage, um, but when you were saying <laughs> about Trevor, Trevor Scott and. Uh, being those 13 fans. Like, we used to actually go with Shoma Josie to poetry sessions around Pretoria. We used to actually, like, um, 
uh, like there's so much that we know about her on a personal level and when we saw her coming up it's like shit you know like this is this is quite dope and we we just loved it for her and and now we have these memories we have these videos we still from when she was still like trying to figure out her poetry we got those videos with us you know we don't know what to do with them because like i'm a hogger of, of memory so i still keep a lot of these things yeah, stock. It's ill that you have such a <laughs> such a dope collectible collection. Uh, but John, like even with that, right? It's, it's what was funny. He said uh, with show going and doing the poetry sessions right. via the poet. Like yeah. even getting to even getting to track an artist as they grow and progress. Just yeah, another layer of that. With that, just, it's just an experience. It's a way for you to kind of look back and see, like, damn, I forgot that this happened. It's the same way that Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram they started doing those. On this day, five years ago, the memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. now it's it's way more custom than that. It's way more custom than that. And exactly. the reward piece of it, and the ability to do things like reward, you know, or airdrop, not reward again, but to airdrop people like, oh, yo, you were at this show, yo, mm-hmm. you knew me from then. Nah, mm-hmm. you get this. Yeah, and you definitely. Yeah. <laughs> come on, fam. That's that's cold. That is a really really cold experience. That's um, hard. But yo, but yo, <laughs> you brought up, or I brought up the fact that COVID canceled the show, and I feel mm-hmm. like we could go on a rant about that. So I don't want to dive too deep oh, yeah. into it. <laughs> but I think that's another kind of cool thing just with Web3 in the space, and we can't really go outside right now. So yep. it's good that we're starting to figure out some more digital, virtual Mm-hmm. experiential ways for people to interact with artists because i'm still of the belief that the number one thing an artist can do is tour because mm-hmm. i think about that i think about what's going to happen when people see you live and what that's going to do for their spirit and their energy and how charged they're going to leave when that happens right. and i don't know if there's a replacement for that but right, right. you know we got to stay safe got to avoid the the omicron <laughs> and, Omnicron, and Omnicron. The, oh my gosh oh is that why they're saying omnicron i yeah. get it now <laughs> wow i didn't get it at first i'm just like omnicron but yeah bro omni man was whoa <laughs> <Good ass. laughs> when, it, when is invincible season two that's what Ooh, i i hear rumors is coming soon so i, I know it's coming it. soon did I'm you read all the room. comics I am. I'm currently still making my way through. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <I laughs> did you Did you read? Well, oh, I guess it's spoilers. So I won't say nothing. Oh, yeah. but I, I, I'll hit <laughs> nah. you offline, bro. Yeah, you, yeah, nah, you, 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 you know, homie, I'm talking about, bro. The one that I said was way worse than Omni Man. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, um, Space Freddy Mercury? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, bro. You, have you got to the part where he's in it yet? Not, not yet, not yet. I'm, in, Yo, uh, I'm only... <laughs> fam, fam. Space Freddy Mercury is like, he's got to be one of the wildest characters ever like thought about in any comic series yeah. in 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 the history. <laughs> like He yeah, is such a ridiculous... Anyway, no spoilers. Shout out Invincible. Uh... Shout out the whole Invincible team and shout out Space Freddie Mercury. Yo, for real. <laughs> so I am, I am gonna let you jump, my G. I know you have wow. some, um, <laughs> some exercising to oh, get yeah. to in a little oh, bit. Yeah, no. But oh, before, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I got you, honey. Before we jump, um, you, yo, the floor is yours, G. Oh, word. Um, oh shit. Wait, not Josh, right? cousin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, Amir. What's good, fam? Oh, what's good, cuz? Um, quick, quick question for you. Um, yeah. What, well, what for Khufu? Uh, so, like, we're getting, I'm getting started in the NFT space and stuff like that, and I just made a wallet and stuff like that. And if you can give, like, some advice to, like, somebody, like, just, like, three, like, simple steps to getting started, like, what are the first, like, three important things that you should do? Okay, I have one question, and then I will think of the three important things. Where did you set up your wallet? I did it on the OpenSea app, and I did it with MetaMask. Okay, cool. Um, So the very first thing I would say is to get a hardware wallet. A hardware wallet is a device, and the, the naming's a little confusing because it doesn't actually store any of your, like, crypto or anything like that. But what it does is 
it allows or it makes it very hard for people to hack or scam your wallet. So I want you to protect your assets first. Now that you have your MetaMask, you can get a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor and you set it up and you can connect the wallet address that's created through your hardware wallet to your MetaMask. So you can use that address anywhere MetaMask is available. But at the same time, in order for you to approve transactions, you have to type in your passcode on your hardware wallet and confirm it. And that prevents things like spoofing, um, which is when some when you're trying to like click a link and it may show one thing on your screen, but somebody sent you a malicious link and what you're seeing is actually not real. And it prevents you from like from hackers that will send out crazy links and be able to gain access to your online wallet. So that would be the first thing. The second thing I would say to do is to go to Ethereum name service, which is ENS, ENS domains, and to buy your .eth. I recommend you do it when gas is low. I'm normally checking gas prices between like 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern, and then like 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, so late night, early morning, hour time is usually when gas is affordable. It should cost you anywhere from 90 to like 160 to get your .eth for a few years. What your .eth allows is it's almost like a Web3 identity. And the way that like you know we go to Twitter, we go to Instagram, we go to all these different places and you have to sign up for a new username every time you go to these places. With places that, um, with decentralized apps, dApps as they call them, that require you to sign in with your wallet, if you connect your Ethereum name service, your ENS, to that wallet address, whenever you sign in, that same address name is shown across all of the platforms. So when I sign in places, kufu.eth shows up in all of these different places. There are certain... Um, apps that still require you to make a separate username and sometimes kufu is gone but kufu.eth is there um, at least it registers from like the wallet display another really cool thing with that is i'm sure you saw your metamask address is a really long string of letters and numbers and yes. in order for someone to send you money you have to copy and paste that string and then send that to them and then you just have to make like that person has to make sure that they're sending it to the right address and that you didn't like leave off a letter or a number and that can really mess things up with your ens name i could just type in jawlefty.eth and it sends directly to them it's official yes the third thing hmm. so we got security we've got your ens so those are the first two that everyone should do. Why did you get set up in Web3? What's your why? Um, honestly, I, I just been hearing like about like OpenSea, the app. So like I think mm -hmm. that, that was like my only way of like how to get introduced to it because I kept hearing about it. So then I just went through okay. the steps of creating, like signing up on it. And then it, it, okay. it gave me the options of either MetaMask uh, there was like some other one called trust something and then there was one more and then and then there was one that said sign in with your username so i just went ahead and i just followed it as it goes um i really didn't have like any real knowledge but i was just following the best one and using like google and stuff to see which of the options that i already had in my face to pick from um and yeah do you want to make your own nfts or are you looking to start collecting nfts i want to collect them Okay. Eventually, uh, so, yeah, but I just like I, I want to collect it first, so I can understand it and like you know be understand like the community and everything. And eventually, once I get an understanding of how everything works, um, I, I would love to do that. Yeah. So the third step is kind of a multi-step piece, and I can offline send you some resources. But I would say the third step, first step is securing your assets, securing your wallet. Second step would be getting your ENS name. Third step would be getting familiar. And so what I mean by that is OpenSea is just one marketplace. And there are tons of other marketplaces that may appeal to you more. They may be curated in a way that you like. They may have different artists that constantly use them that you're a fan of. They may have an interface that you enjoy more. 
and you mentioned community as well, you're going to want to start joining discords. You can start with marketplace discords and see who's, you know, what those conversations are like. And as you start finding projects, you'll expand into project specific discords or even person specific discords. And as you spend time in there, you'll start to understand like, oh, I do like how this community talks and the camaraderie that's here. Or like there's one um, discord that I'm in and it's an Australian one and they play poker every morning at 6 a.m. my time. And that was a really, really cool thing that when I saw this NFT project, it actually made me collect one of the NFTs because the idea of having a friendly little poker club was fun to me. And I, I missed that from my college days. So I would say that that's your next piece. And I will shoot you resources, um, like a good, some good starting points. But yeah, those would be my three. When you say like uh, marketplaces on Discord, is that like the Discord name and if if it isn't, what is it? And where do you find um, different discords to get into? So marketplaces are going to be the places that are the platforms that are actually selling the NFTs. So OpenSea, Rarible, Foundation, Super Rare, Nifty Gateway, um, Zora. I'm leaving out a ton, but that those are the marketplaces the discords marketplaces also have their own discords and that's pretty much the community of the marketplace so you can go to like open seas discord I'm, actually i don't even know if open sea has a discord i'm not in theirs but i know zora has a discord and in zora's discord there's a lot of really cool information you can interact with the people who are building the protocol you can ask questions about different artists you can also be exposed to different artists and so the way that you find all of these is i mainly use twitter um like i said i'm going to send you like a good starting point and you'll be able to branch out from there but you'll find discords kind of randomly um there isn't really a one single directory where they all live just as you start getting familiar and finding out what it is you like about the space and what it is you're really looking to do where you may say yo i only want to collect profile picture projects that's going to lead you down a certain path you may say, yo, I literally only want to collect one of one music NFTs. That's going to lead you down the path of catalog. You may say, no, I don't want to do music or um, profile pictures. I want to do really, really um, eclectic art or I want to do generative art. You just have to figure out what that exact kind of purpose is. And as you explore, whether it's through Twitter I don't recommend Instagram for it. I pretty much almost exclusively use Twitter as my main social media platform with Web3. There are other alternatives. I just think Twitter works really, really well. So, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that's the, uh, the, get, the get familiarism is a much uh, larger step than the first two. But I think that it's really important because that will help you answer that why in your head. Like when I was mentioning the job earlier, the why for them is the fact that they are young, super talented, and they have an, a chance to create experiences with these early supporters, fans, collectors, and build that out over a 15 to 20 year time span in a way that literally no artist has been able to before. And that's a like there's a lot of pieces that we can start putting together since that why is clear. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you for that. Um, so, like I said, like I'm into, I'm into like comics and things like that. I, I do a podcast. We we talk about uh, basically everything Marvel and anything that comes out like that. So with, with that, I'm trying to like put the NFT space for that uh, group of people or community and just get invested with that to you know bring it onto my platform. But There's a really, really dope community being built called Meta Hero. Yeah. Um, built with Punks Comics. And I will shoot you that stuff because they're trying to be like the Marvel of Web3. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's yeah. Uh, yeah I'll, I'll put both of y'all on DM and I'll just shoot all that over. Bad uh, boys. Dope, man. Well, th thanks for your time. Thanks for your questions. Ja, love you. Um, keep doing what you're doing. You guys yeah, are awesome. Know, fam. Love you, too, man. Yeah, man. Shout Bless. out to Imani and Jalen. I see y'all. Yo, Imani is the first <laughs> guest of 2022. Thanks. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
but you know this was dope i think that there's there's some really like nice beginner points in here um and just getting started moments ja you know i think you're fucking incredible my guy it's just like this is gonna be i i can't wait to look back on this the same way i wish i would have been able to look back on the moment we had in the studio you know what i mean on some like we said it and then we did it as we always do (laughs) and i got footage too so it's just gonna be dope Hey! Oh yeah, now nah, this is. I got the screen record going. <laughs> we oh, yeah. on it, man. Twitter has to figure out a way to let me record this more natively. But right, I digress. Ja, I have a question Let's for see. you. I have two questions for you. What's up? My first question is, what is your seed phrase? And My seed phrase. Mm. It was funny. So actually, uh, when you set up your MetaMask, uh, they gave you that recovery key. And the terminology for it is seed phrase. And I've been saying like, yo, seed phrase just is not scary enough because if you lose your seed phrase, then mm. the uh, whoever has it or – well, one, if you lose it, you can no longer access your crypto. Uh, mm-hmm. Like let's say you lose your access to your wallet or forget your password. You cannot yeah. recover it. Nobody can get your seed phrase. Like it is gone for forever. So – scary but also if somebody gets <laughs> access to your seed phrase then they can take everything in your wallet they can import your wallet onto their system and clear it out and oh, unless shit. you happen to catch them doing it like that's that's it all your stuff is gone there's no recourse there and to me seed phrase just doesn't scream massive security <laughs> breach potential <Yeah>. it's like, <laughs> You're like my seed phrase. Yeah, let me just screenshot this. Right. Never screenshot your screen your um seed right. phrase. You do not want it on a computer. You don't even want it anywhere digital, which is kind of funny that the most secure thing that we can do in this digital space is have a physical right. item. Um pe- people make uh, there's a joke where it's like nothing's really secure because of the $5 wrench method, which is like somebody could just go buy a wrench and make you tell oh my where God. your seed phrase is, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're, anyway, we're anyway. Level. We're already kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's cooked, bro. It's like my G, like it's here. here. Password it is. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't even know. This shit is 24 right, words. Right. Are you kidding me? You, you, you really you think I pressure. memorized this? <laughs> you really put the pressure on. <laughs> so, here on Money Trees, we're planting seeds, helping you start to grow a rainforest. Word. In your career, Web3 and beyond, what would your seed phrase be? It, think of it as the, the motto for your, for your rainforest. Well, I think... Your collection of money trees. I think I would have to go with know when to know, uh, which is just like knowing when to say no, when, when to not go with something and just like stick to your guns you know or to to know what to say no to so that you can do way more awesome things uh and say yes to a lot more awesome things in life i love that no one to know to know there it is and my second question for Mm -hmm. you what would you like the price of our one of one Mm -hmm. jaw lefty money (laughs) trees note number four to be Mm. Damn, see, now that it's number four, I'm thinking, uh, I might have to go with 555, you know, and keep some angel numbers around. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So is, is, so right now, is, is this is an interesting thing. I'm going to keep track of this. Uh-huh. Two people have said their value in USD, mm-hmm. and two people have said their value in ETH. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. So I think that it also speaks to, like, your familiarity with it, yeah. right? So what's going to happen is... I'm going to determine whenever I mint the NFT after the show uh-huh. how much 555 USD is in ETH uh-huh. at the moment. Uh-huh. I think ETH is sitting somewhere around like 3900 at the moment. Okay. So we'll convert that and then that will be the price in ETH. The cool thing is if ETH goes down, then the price goes down. Mm-hmm. But if ETH goes up, the price and the value goes up. And we can so we that. will set it. <laughs> <laughs> We will set it based off USD, but uh, we will also increase your familiarity with the uh, the cryptocurrencies themselves. Right. I'm looking forward to it, bro. Fam, 
As you said, this is just the prologue, yeah. Man, I want to thank everyone that came up and spoke. This was our first time having guests join for the one-on-ones. I'm not mad at the format, honestly. I think I think that's the point of me having it on Twitter Spaces. Yeah. Is it's about you, it's about your experience, but it's also about how that experience is affecting other people and what kind of growth that looks exactly. like from a perspective. Like, yo, like that, those are some good questions and also some good notes on the collectibles. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot wait to have my Wild East Radio NFTs in 15 years after the third freaking world Ooh. tour. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> bruh, come on, y'all. I got the 2022. Like, <laughs> please stop playing with me. Like, this is this is not a game over that here, ass, man. Bro. That ass. <laughs> <laughs> my g Yo. peace love and blessings as you continue enjoying the self-maintenance day likewise thankful brother. that you thank took you. the time yes man man glad glad you were able to join me for this thank you fam i appreciate you you know it hey i will catch you and we will go to medina and get some soaps Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yo, yeah, wait, bro, whoa, why whoa, you whoa, eating whoa. the soap, man? What you mean? Please. You said I'm watering at the phobic. Wait. <laughs> Came out wrong. <road. laughs>